Well, I almost got that prediction right, didn't I? Hmm. Well, that was a hell of a game. I'll start it with that. Hell of a game. Uh, Leinster started off in the first 15 to 20 minutes being the perfect team. It was kind of jaw-dropping to watch, especially with the atmosphere of the stadium kind of like emanating out of my TV screen. Everything was going perfectly for them. That move off the line-out was just oh, sensational. Straight to the number eight because they knew Will Skelton would be falling asleep and then he passes it off for the try. Followed by a 50-22 by Lowe, right in the corner. Oh, it was beautiful. It was everything that I wanted it to be. Uh, my God, sensational stuff. Um, and then, La Rochelle got back into it. I'm gonna go through the notebook and we'll go through the notes. Um, I'm just gonna go through it. Yep, what a, what a start. Um, but then I, I think after the first 20 minutes, we started having more of the tight game coming in. We had scrums, we had line outs. And I think you could see from the first scrum that La Rochelle had complete dominance in the scrum. They weren't always gifted the penalties that they should have been gifted, but they had the dominance. Their, their pack was 40 kilos heavier than Leinster's. 40 kilos, it's massive, it's a big difference. And I also saw that in every scrum, Leinster set up with their front row with rounded backs. You wanna have a straight back coming straight into a scrum. If you're, if you're bending like this, you're prone to collapse in and collapse out and not being able to hold a charge. Um, their scrum was just dominant all game and they didn't exactly get the, pe the penalties that they should have throughout the game, to be completely honest. Um, the second try was also wonderful from Leinster. Um, yeah, what else have we got here? And then there was a yellow card when La so La Rochelle were, were fighting back and then there was a yellow card for not going 10 meters. I'm gonna take this time to talk about the referee. Don't know his name. I've seen him before. He's got awful. He was got awful in this game. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog My God, he had no control over this game whatsoever. He's had an early yellow card for not going 10, which I've never seen ever called in my entire life. Um, the breakdown was not refereed at all um, from both sides. Uh, I've even, okay, I'm gonna go through my notebook here and these are all the examples I've got because I just had to keep noting because of how bad the refereeing was. He's inconsistent with the offsides. He, uh, Leinster were offside a couple of times, but not to the point where I think where it affected the game and he didn't call it. And then the referee calls an offside on the 12 of La Rochelle being slightly offside, not interfering with the game after a kick. That was bad. Leinster coming in at the side of the breakdown and not getting penalised. Leinster off of their feet of the breakdown and not getting pen uh, and getting the penalty. Leinster are off the feet of the breakdown and they got the penalty instead of La Rochelle getting the penalty. That ended up in a fight um, where the referee uh, basically had no police over the game. Uh, there was a penalty for holding someone on for extra on the floor. Even the commentators started stating, the ref is, is playing awful now. A quote from Austin Healy, should be a penalty for La Rochelle. Blatantly saying it, you know, which is, you know, he has a position of responsibility by uh, calling on the TV. And he has the confidence to say that he's not doing a good job. La Rochelle got gifted a penalty for a challenge in the air by Leinster, which was completely fair within their own 22. Another bad call. They call, he calls a truck and trailer 65 minutes into the game when there was no call for it for the rest of the game. Uh, La Rochelle's maul was really dominant at the line out and you'll see that multiple times the front of their maul, because it was so dominant, was ended up not pushing up against any players. And then all of a sudden, like you decide this is truck and trailer at like 68 minutes. Spring rows coming in at the wrong side, not even close. It wasn't even a question of coming through the gate. We've got the ruck here. This is Leinster's side. This is La Rochelle's side. He was literally coming in like this, not called, right in front of the referee. And yeah, that was it. That, that was just a, a few examples of like how bad the refereeing was. It was really poor. Um, and I, I don't know if you noticed, but in the we'll get into it. I'll go back to the timeline of where I was originally. But if you notice in the game, 
to like uh, the first kind of quarter, sorry, the first half of the second half, the first half of the second half, the game was a little bit sloppy and you kind of wonder why it was sloppy. It's because the referee is so inconsistent. The players have no idea which way is up and what rules are going to be called at what time. He directly affected the quality of this game when you had two teams that are just so sensational. You have this referee refereeing, refereeing it. I want you to bear in mind, right? This referee, referees are paid per year as a salary for what they do, right? You think about people in your company or what you do for work. If you're paid that kind of money, you can't make like, you can't have like over 60% of the calls that you make go wrong. Like if you did, the company would have to fire you just purely out of like, they want to, they, they can't deal with the amount of mistakes that you're making. And yet this guy is refereeing a final. This guy needs to be shipped to the Super Rugby where he would get churned the hell out for making decisions like this throughout a game. He, the commentators would chew him out. The fans would chew him out. No one would have any patience for this, but he's in the, he's apparently he's in the Euro, European Cup final. So I'm going to say on it. Enough negative about the refs, but God damn did it have to be mentioned. It was poor. Uh, La Rochelle scored from the try at 18 minutes with one, left, one minute left of the sin bin. I think they did really excellent there because they kept the ball down for the last five minutes of that sin bin in the opposition, in a scrum, being constantly reset, and it constantly drained the clock. And then when they scored, it was the end of the sin bin. That was just excellent possession rugby. Like, it was like textbook. Like, it was just, it was superb rugby. Um, one, one moment I thought that was quite funny was, uh, it was at like 19 minutes and like, I think uh, La Rochelle just scored their try and I could hear over the intercom for the stadium. And I'm pretty sure they probably did this on purpose as I try and like rock them. The, 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 the guy in the commentation, not in the commentation, the guy announcing goes, Leinster 20, Stade Francais 7. I was like, come on, man, he's doing that on purpose. He's trying to make them feel like they're nothing, like, which is fair enough, you know, it's Irish home game in a way. James Ryan went for HIA at 30 minutes and he didn't come back. Now, that was really key. Um, and that was key in what I've been saying about the tight. Uh, the line out started to suffer a lot for Leinster. Uh, and if you noticed after that point, they no longer sent anybody up in, in the line out, in, in their defensive line out against La Rochelle. Um, it didn't matter anyway, because even if they got a straight counter drive on La Rochelle, La Rochelle's Mall still managed to make at least 10 meters every single time, which is incredible. You know, if you've got someone that's not even throwing a guy up in the air and they've got a defensive maul and they're getting driven back. You've got a per like the opposition has a perfect chance to like set them all in a counter maul and La Ro it just didn't matter. La Rochelle just like, it just, they still drove past, which is just sensational dominance. I thought the, the next try by La Rochelle was truly excellent. Um, they used big guys to suck in the players such as Skelton. Um, and then they managed to whip it wide when the opportunity was there. The 10 for uh, La Rochelle, I think, is excellent as well. In that try, he, he had the golden angle of staying straight and whipping the ball at the last minute and managed to create a gap and draw defenders in, and that produced the try for them. Um, Will Skelton in general, I mean, the commentators were saying this, and I completely agree. Um, he, he is, like... He is player of the year at the moment. He's just sensational. Like, he's so good. So good in the tight. So good in the loose. D yeah, he's incredible. Saracens will probably be kicking themselves. They managed that he, like, they let him walk out the door. They come out in the second half. The mood in the stadium is just a little bit duller than it was at the beginning of the game. Everyone in the stadium is just chilled out, chilled out a little bit more. And La Rochelle, they take advantage of it. They manage to return on a counter attack on a kick. Um, and they managed to get a penalty to bring it to 23-17 at 43 minutes. And that's going to be a moment that I think a lot of people won't pick up on. But because the atmosphere came out flat in the second half, La Rochelle instantly managed to get within one score of their opposition, and that instantly puts pressure on Leinster, who had come, who had came to such a flying start, 17-0 at the beginning of the game, um, and now the pressure's all on Leinster. Uh, and then after that point, there was this atmosphere for the next 15 to 20 minutes of uh, uneasiness within the stadium, and you could feel it, and you could feel it with the players as well. James Lowe tried to kick out, as he usually does, out of his own 22. A couple of them went out on the full, and they were just kind of making mistakes. I mean, La Rochelle at the same time were making mistakes as well, so the score kind of stayed the same. It was 26-20 at, at 50 minutes. Um, but everything just got uneasy. No one was comfortable. 
And yeah, the game was just on a knife edge. I've got written here, the next score at 65 minutes is going to be key, just because we're in this weird no man's land where no one's really claimed the game. Then La Rochelle get a key penalty within Leinster's territory. They go for the corner, um, and Leinster get penalised again for collapsing, and they constantly get penalised for collapsing, and eventually they score the try. And the one piece of good refereeing that actually occurred is the man was remembered and he was taken off for malicious malicious play. Um, and yeah, from that point on, um, from that point on, it was, you know, it was all she wrote. Uh, Leinster could never really recover. I do want to say Aldry, or Aldry, the number eight for La Rochelle, he had some really smart uh, plays with picking and going off the back of rucks that were collapsing. There would be occasions where there would be a ruck, the scrum half was either inside the ruck or he wasn't available, and Aldry just had the, the intelligence just to grab the ball and go rather than letting Leinster come and counter ruck, and I think that kept the ball going forward. So many times he did that, and I think that will go on song quite a bit. Um, I think La Rochelle probably would have just won the game if they didn't have a stupid high tackle by their 12, which was a card. He should have been sent off, um, and which is perfectly fair. Um, and then with two minutes to go, the Leinster prop goes flying in with a shoulder into a head, which again was definitely a card. And then the game was sealed off by Van der Fleer, basically just deciding he wanted to be a La Rochelle player and going into trying to interfere. So. In the end. In the end, the best team won. I would have been quite annoyed if La Rochelle didn't win the game, just purely based off I felt that the referee was just not giving them the advantage that they had earned within the game. The scrum was dominant, never got a penalty for it, really. Um, at the breakdown, Leinster, all over the place. Uh, yeah. Um, hell of a game. Ronan Nagara slays the dragon once again. And Leinster now have only lost three games, but one of them was the semi-final in the URC, and the other one is the final in Europe. And as I said in the preview show, this is huge. This is emotionally huge, you know? You might think these are just professionals and momentum's not a thing and I think you're probably a pretty you're probably an idiot if you think that. Um because in reality, sixty-four percent of your starters are Leinster players. And they've choked twice now. They even didn't play their starters in the URC to win this European game. There's been talk throughout the throughout this week leading up to the game that the stars on their shirt that they show for Leinster it only counts for Europe, and they fluffed it. I hate to say it, but my prediction right now is, uh, I think this is Ireland doing what Ireland do every time they have a World Cup. This is the moment where I think we've seen the crest of Ireland and their dominance is over. And I don't think they're gonna be winning a World Cup. I'll put that prediction out now. It's too much of an emotional loss to have those two losses right at the end of the season. You'll have a question of self-confidence, for sure. Um, I think there's no doubt about that. But I've hey, been wrong before, haven't I? So, we'll see. Anyway, uh, hope you enjoy the game wherever you are. See it for Europe. Uh, Premiership next week. Uh, and then Super Rugby, and then I think Super Rugby Championship before the World Cup. So... So Leinster couldn't go and play another game before uh, the World Cup to get their minds off of it. Oh wait, no they can't. So anyway, I'll see you later.